Welcome to another broadcast from Victory Church Odessa with Gian, Tracy, and all the wonderful church members. Today, you will listen to the Word of God, wonderful worship and praise music, and the practical application from Scripture for your daily life. Our goal is to exalt the name of our Lord Jesus and to encourage you to develop more faith as you reflect on the Bible. We hope you will enjoy this program. Now let me introduce you to our pastor, Gian. Returning home is the topic of this morning here in our worship service. And we invite you to go to the website vchurch.us to download the bulletin with the scriptures of this teaching. The other way to do it, if you are watching in the comfort of your home, use your phone camera, point towards the QR code, and then click on that link to download the bulletin of this morning. Thank you so much for your support, my beautiful church member. Thank you. You are awesome. And so every and each one of you guys here in the church today, it's a wonderful thing that we all participate in this beautiful act of giving. You know, when we give, we receive. It is a principle in the kingdom of God. If you want to do it, my friend watching, feel free to go to our website, bechurch.us. Look for the tab Give. That is the way to go. Thank you so much, Sebastian, for the work and everybody else here in the church. Beautiful team working together. Glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. I remind you our Victory Radio 24-7. All the time broadcasting wonderful messages for you, music and everything else. VictoryRadio.us is the website to go. Returning home. That is something, my friend, that some people do, some people don't. But why is that? Well, you know, some individuals never leave their home. For real. You know how that goes, right? Some individuals never leave their home. They stay there. Since they are little, they are raised there and they never leave. But majority of people, eventually, they fly away from home, right? They cough. They cough. You know, there are images here on the screen, as you can see, right? A beautiful nest. You see the nest with the eggs. And eventually those birds, beautiful birds, asking, Mama, Mama, feed me, feed me. That's cute. Eventually the mama will begins to start wondering, well, how long am I going to be doing this? Until eventually the birds fly. Because it's the normal process in life. Naturally, you want to experience the world and have your own adventures, right? That's what everybody does. We all want that. Isn't it true? Now, if your life is based on a good foundation, you will be fine. Even then, eventually, you will find out how much you miss home. And then you want to come back. Right? We all want to come back. Sooner or later. But, you know, we need to come back for the right reason. When we come back home, we need to come back home for the right reason, which is love. Today I want to talk to you about returning home and why is why we do it. Sometimes we don't do it for the right reasons. We come back home because we just want somebody to fix the problems that we have. You know, sometimes young adults, sometimes old adults... They want to come back home saying, Mom, I need money. (laughs) I'm broke. I have problems. Sometimes we just are uh, amazed with how often people come back home. That is always because they are in trouble. They never come back for the right reasons. They don't come to see the parents. They always come back because they want something. Remember this. It is okay to come back home, but you need to come back for the right reason. Love. Love. Today I want to talk to you about two main things, my friend. One is the power of humility. And the other thing is the art of listening. Are you ready for this? There are reasons why we come back home, right? Well, one of those is because we feel that we are stuck. You might feel that way. Time passes by. 
You are stuck in a career, in a job. You are stuck in a relationship. You are stuck in, in, the, in your development as a human being. You just feel that you are not going anywhere. And when you are like that, you know something is missing. You need help. Naturally, sometimes you are broke. You don't have any money for anything. You have so many debts and you have difficulties to pay for all those things, right? So you are broke and you need help. There are occasions, friends, when simply the situation is not about your career or about your money, not even for your relationships. Simply you are sick. Accidents happen. Illnesses come to anybody. And what do you do when you are sick? Well, you need help. That's the power of humility. In another scenario, it could be when, for example, you had a situation, legal situation, I don't know. You are in trouble with the law, with the justice. You can be in trouble with your work, right? You can be in any kind of trouble, and then you say, I need help. Now, the right thing to do is, and in each one of those scenarios that I described, you need to try to do something yourself, to try to get out of that situation. You know what is wrong, absolutely wrong, is for people that the first thing they do is to call parents or grandparents or somebody. In the first moment when they realize that they need help, of course you must realize you need help. It's a good thing that you realize you need help. That's the power of humility. But have you tried to fix the problem yourself? Some people are just too lazy to think about, well, what can I do in this situation? Why will I expect that somebody that is far away is going to come to fix this problem when right here there is a solution? Even probably somebody else. So remember this, my friend. There is... One moment in your life when you are in need, but it's okay to call anybody for help when you have tried to fix that situation. Then is when you are in the right place to ask for help. But definitely it is wrong for anybody that the first thing to do when it has a little difficulty is to start crying out for help. Help, help. Help. Let me give you funny scenarios where you see that. You send somebody to find something in a room, in a cabinet, in drawers, or somewhere. And the person is on his way to that place and is already thinking that he's not going to find it. And has not been arrived to the room. And that thing is sometimes on top of a desk or in the first drawer but some people are just so horrible that they cannot even try. And I'm not kidding. So I need to ask you this question, my friend, honestly. When you are in the midst of your troubles, do you at least try to find a solution to the trouble? When you are being sent to search for something or do a task, do you at least Try? Because if you are not even trying, let me tell you, <laughs> this is a big problem in your life. And I will tell you why. Sooner or later, eventually, not just one or two people around you, everybody around you is going to be so tired of you. And everyone is going to say, I'm, I'm done with this person. I'm hungry. Okay, go to the refrigerator. Look for food. I'm thirsty. Okay, get up and get the glass of water. But some people just don't want to do the very minimum to fix their problems. I'm not talking about crying out for help. I'm not saying that's the power of humility, my friend. That's the, that's the epitome of being lazy, entitled. That's not right. 
is simply not right. Imagine those individuals that are spending money like crazy and they, they want mama or daddy to give them the money because they, they are so horrible managing their money. It's wrong. There are families that are very generous with their children, right? And they say, okay, you're going to go into this trip, you're going to go to this place, and here's the money for the food and this and that. And then some young people are really so unwise that rather than being careful in the spending of the money for the food or travel expenses, they spent everything in one shot. And then they expect that somebody's gonna pay for the rest. Or it's just a matter of making another phone call or send another text message and the money is gonna be deposited. No, my friends, I'm not talking about that type of humility. That's not humility, I already told you. That's simply lack of wisdom. And then when they are in need because they don't have money or they are sick, and why they are sick? Why some people get hurt? Because they don't pay attention. They are in trouble because they, they again are driving without the driver's license or they, they forgot to pay for the car insurance and now after the accident, it's a huge debt, etc. I am not talking about that. I am talking about someone that is trying hard to take care of himself, that person that does the right thing and still at some point can feel that is stuck in a point in life is broke because simply things happen and the, the person doesn't have enough money for that, gets sick or is in trouble. But the person has tried their best to fix the problem. Then is when you say, I need help. And anyone, mom, dad, uncle, aunt, friends, anybody will say, I will work with you. That's the power of humility. And I will tell you this story that the Lord Jesus mentions here in the chapter 15 of the Gospel of Luke related with that. So you want to join me in this reading? And we read from the easy-to-read version in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, guide us through this reflection. Amen. Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Give me now the part of your property that I am supposed to receive someday. So the father divided his wealth between his two sons. A few days later, the younger son gathered up all that he had and left. He traveled far away to another country, and there he wasted his money, living like a fool. After he spent everything he had, there was a terrible famine throughout the country. He was hungry and needed the money. So he went and got a job. With one of the people who lived there, the men sent him into the fields to feed pigs. He was so hungry that he wanted to eat the food the pigs were eating. But no one gave him anything. The son realized that he had been very foolish. He thought, all my father's hired workers have plenty of food, but here I am, almost dead, because I have nothing to eat. I will leave and go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against God and have done wrong to you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son, but let me be like one of your hired workers. So he left and went to his father. While the son was sting, still a long way off, his father saw him coming and felt sorry for him. So he ran to him and hugged and kissed him. The son said, Father, I have sinned against God and have done wrong to you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son but the father said to his servants, hurry, bring the best clothes and put them on him. Also put a ring on his finger and good sandals on his feet. And bring our best calf and kill it so that we can celebrate with plenty to eat. My son was dead 
but now he is alive. Again, he was lost, but now he is found. So they begin to have a party. This is a passage that is wonderful. And it has to do with what I was saying earlier, you know. When you are in need of help, you know, whether you are stuck or broke, sick, in trouble, and you have tried everything. That is the case of this man. He realized what he did was wrong. He realized that. And there are some sections of the scripture that I would like to bring to your attention. You know, one of those is precisely when, when the father, the, the son realized what he needed to do. He says here in verses 17 and 20, the son realized that he had been very foolish. Realization is a beautiful process. Realizing something, it's a wonderful miracle in your life. Is admitting, acknowledging that you have done something wrong. Very foolish, he says. Because he did. Imagine a guy who so inconsiderate. Ask his father, give me, your, give me my inheritance before you die. I don't want to be even here with you. I just want my money because I'm entitled. You see where it all begins? I'm entitled to your money because I'm your son. You need to give me what is mine. Wow. What a child. What a son. What an attitude. Well, you have this, and I want it. Well, you are my husband. I want what you have. You are my daughter, and you have plenty. I want that. You are my wife, and you have this. I want it. I'm entitled. Well, the company has all these things. Well, I want them for me. I want for me. Me, 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 me. That is how it all begins. It's a wrong attitude, a wrong perspective of things. Do you see life that way, my friend? Do you see life like people owe you anything or something? When you go to visit with relatives that have plenty do you feel that they owe you because they have a lot and you have less? When you are with people that are doing good in life, you hate them because they are in a much better position than yours? Th that's the beginning of the problem. The beginning of the problem is when people are thinking too much of themselves like the rest don't deserve what they have. That's a wrong attitude, my friend. But the thing is, this son realized that. And I want you to understand why he realized that. Don't you think that is because this son now, suddenly he became so wonderful that he understood? No. There was something that was happening that the son didn't know. The father. There was a father. A father that was affected because this inconsiderate son took the money, his money. He was affected and yet even hurt, never stopped praying for him. A father that lost half of his assets because this entitled son pushed him to get that inheritance. But this father, he was hoping this bad child is going to come back to me understanding the realities of life. So I am willing to lose half of my assets. I'm willing to lose half of what I possess. Although I have worked so hard all my life, I am willing to lose half of all this. Because I hope 
my son one day will come back to me. And he prayed. And he prayed hard for this son to come back. Now, for many of you, this is probably something that you never have thought about it. That an old man who lost half of his assets, rather than being angry with this child, is asking God, Please, Lord, protect my son. Please, Lord, bring him back to me. Please, Lord, I know my son is an idiot. I know this kid is so stupid that he's going to lose it all. I know that. He is terrible making good decisions. He is greedy. He is full of pride. He is lazy. Uh, I know, Lord. I know. It's my own son. But I'm asking you, Father. Save him. Save him. Even if he loses everything, Lord. But bring him back to me. Because I love him. So please. Now you understand. This son realized that he was foolish. Very foolish. Because there was a father somewhere praying for him. This son came back home because of this old man. Not because he was now suddenly understanding and reasonable. <laughs> no. The father was praying. So for all parents, I want you to know, you need to continue praying for your children. Pray and ask God, God, please bring my son back to me. Bring my daughter back to me. Pray in that way and say, Lord, whatever it takes. Even if, if they are they end up broke or whatever. But I want my child coming back to me. I want my child to come back to senses, to, to do what is right. That, my friends, is what can change the life of your children. Your prayer, your intercession, your intercession. If you are wondering why some of you if you, my friend, if you're wondering why your children don't want to talk to you, you need to ask yourself, are you praying for your children or you are just complaining? Because if you are the kind of dad or the kind of mom that all that you do is talk to everybody about how mean your children are, well, guess what? You are doing another wrong thing. Because the right thing is to don't say anything about it but going to your private place of prayer and ask the good Lord to touch the heart of your children. That is how you fix that problem. Because the Lord listened to your prayers. If you listen to the Lord, if you are listening what I am saying to you, if you are understanding, you will be able to talk to the Lord and he will listen to you and the Lord will do wonders in your life. But the complaining and just telling another bad story about your son or your daughter, that doesn't fix anything. You have to understand that. You can fix it, mom and dad, grandpa, grandma, uncle, aunt. You can fix it. Start praying for that child. Start praying for that person. Lord, touch them. Now, of course, the son made his part, right? He did what he needed to do. He was willing, eventually, through the circumstances. Aha, uh -huh. that's the issue. Some parents don't want their children to suffer. And they, every time they see him in trouble, here is the money, here is the money, here is the money. And they think that they can fix their children just by sending money, sending money, sending money. No. Sending money is not the solution. Sometimes children need to go through difficulties to learn lessons because they also must learn how to manage money. And when they are in real trouble, when there is no other option, when they call and say, I need help, of course you're going to help. But you have to see exactly that they came to this place of realization that they have been very foolish. 
And this, it's important that you notice that if you have to be, you have to be smart, my friend, as a mom, as a dad, to see if your child is whether realizing that has been foolish or is again playing you, just manipulating you. You love your children. You love your whomever. You want to help. But don't. Don't make the mistake of letting them play you again just because they are crying over the phone. It's ridiculous. Sometimes you can see kids and adults playing others just to get something out of them. And there is no honesty in the phone call or the text message. They even can come in person to you and make you a whole drama play, you know, Hollywood type. Here I am again, I'm suffering, and blah, blah, blah. And it's just a show. The question is, what have you learned through this experience? My son, my daughter, there's when you need to be smart. And you need to ask them questions. Like, what happened? Well, la, 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 la. they tell you the story, okay. What have you learned through this story? I don't know. <laughs> you know, here this verse tells us this guy learned this, learned the lesson. Listen to what he says. All my father's hired workers have plenty of food, but here I am almost dead because I have nothing to eat. I, I will leave and go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against God. I have done wrong to you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, but let me be like one of your hired workers. So he left and went to his father. The realization takes you to some conclusions, to some learning lessons. That is why you need to ask those questions to your children when they are in trouble. Tell me, what have you learned? Is there any apology in that phone call? Is there any comment that makes you understand is there any indication that they are sorry for real for what they have done to you? Because if you just don't want to <laughs> confront them and just let him play you again, it's not going to work. What I have to tell you is not going to work unless you really know this person is truly sorry and has repented. Okay? It's your job to make sure your son, your daughter, really repented. Because this is what tells us here. Here in verses 20, section B to 21, while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him coming and felt sorry for him. So he ran to him and hugged him and kissed him. The son says, Father, here is the key. The son said, the son said, the person spoke. Open his mouth or her mouth. Father, I have sinned against God and have done wrong to you. Spoke. It's not just that. It's not just that. There has to be an acknowledgement. Words are important. Okay, son, I understand. You need my help. Tell me. Is there anything you want to tell me? No. <laughs> okay. So it's not ready there yet. You get it? Do you get it? If your son, if your daughter doesn't apologize, doesn't say, I have sinned against God and against you, that person has not arrived yet to this place of repentance. Then just embrace them and saying, here is my credit card and go ahead. It's just another expense. It's just another story to tell. In two months, you will be again telling the same story. He played me again. He must believe I am a fool. Well, guess what? You are a fool. It's more important that you see that when your children are in trouble than any other thing. Pray for your children. I already told you that. Pray for them. And whatever happens, happens. They must learn lessons. 
But when they come back to you, try to read between the lines. Try to understand the feeling and hear and expect to hear the apology and the confession of this child saying, I have sinned against God. You're going to tell me that it's simply they blew it all and made a big mess and everything is okay? When things are not okay. If they messed it up, they need to apologize. Doesn't make any sense that you're going to rescue them and fix the problems again with more money just because they are crying. Father, I have sinned against God. There you go. Why children are in trouble? Why people are in trouble? My friends, it's because they are sinning against God. People refuse to have a relationship with the Lord God. People say bad things about God. Many of you have children that all their lives have been saying horrible things about God, the church, the Bible, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, pastors. And you're just going to let them get away with that? Because they are crying in, in trouble? They have been insulting God. And you're just going to say, here is my credit card. Yes, here is the room and here is the food and here is another car. By the way, here are the, the cars of my... You can drive my car now. Really? Really, my friend? Who is the fool? It's not the kid. Forgive me, but you are the fool. You are the fool when you just let your children play you over and over and over again, insulting God, behaving the way that they behave. Of course they are going to have troubles in life. Everybody has troubles in life. I have troubles in life, and I'm a good guy. Life is full of problems. It is life. But not because I'm against God. Life gives me trouble because it's the process of life. But when your children are against God and against the Bible, against you because you are a believer, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, honestly, do you think that this is just something that happened out of nowhere for no reason? Are you serious, my friend? Come on, wake up. When your children are going in the wrong path, what do you think is going to happen? When your children are doing what is wrong, what do you think is going to happen? Honestly, friends, they don't want to work. They don't want to go to school. They don't want a degree. They don't want to have a degree. They don't want to work hard. They don't want to do what is right. They only want to spend money. They only want to go in parties. They are totally okay with all kind of bad sexual behavior, drugs, drinking, smoking, irresponsibility. <laughs> Do you really think that people that live that way are going to have a nice life? Please. It's obvious. It's gravity. Is going to happen. And it's not because you are a dad, a mom, a bad mom or a bad dad. Children make their own decisions like you did, like I did. Have I suffered myself consequences of my poor decisions? Yes. What do you think happened to my own children? Same thing. Well, let's be frank. What has happened to you? All your poor decisions brought you to some disasters. And because of that, you start to change. And what? Then you confess your sins and you came back to the Lord. Hello. Do you think that that only applies to you? That magically your children are not part of the same equation? <laughs> Open your eyes, my friends. Your children are going to reap what they sow. 
they behave wrongly, their consequences are going to happen. Are we going to enjoy their sufferings? Never. We love them. But it's going to happen. Our job is to keep praying for them. I already told you that. But then your second job is when they come, listen to the declaration. The son said, Father, I have sinned against God and I have done wrong to you. I'm no longer worthy to call your son. Then you can do what is right, right? Hurry, bring them close and let's forget about it, son. Okay, you are here. Let's start all over again. No matter what happened, the power of humility will bring results to anybody. Now, if you are that son, if you are that daughter, if you, my friend, are the son or daughter that have messed up big time and you are now in trouble, I want you to know there is power in your humility and you better get it right. If you are now stuck in a relationship, if you are broke, sick, in trouble, and you have tried everything, there is power in humility. Come home and ask for help. Okay? We are okay with that. But now I want you to pay attention to the next part of this teaching. The art of listening. What do you think happened to this son and this father? They have the party that day. There is an issue with the other brother that I'm not going to talk to you about it today. I just want to, I want you to think about what do you think happened the next morning? After the party and the celebration and the father took the son to the, his old bedroom. I'm so glad you are back home. Yes, dad, me too. They hug each other, kiss each other, have a good night, went to sleep. What do you think the next day happened? It's 11 a.m. And the father goes to the servants. Shh, shh, everybody, quiet. He's sleeping. He's tired. Shh. 2 p.m. Can you please bring him some, bring him some breakfast? He's tired. Do you really think that happened? <laughs> if you think that happened, you are dreaming. <laughs> that is not what happened. This man lost half of his money. Thanks to the stupidity of the child. And you think he will say, let's do it again. The same thing. I'm going to tolerate his laziness, irresponsibility, entitlement. Just because he came back home, repented. No, it's not just that simple. <laughs> Do you get it? Do you get it, my friend? It's not that simple. Fine. We praise God. The sun came back. Glory to God. Thank it. I lost half of my money, but it's okay. He's alive. Let's celebrate. Okay. Next morning. Come on. Time to get up. Okay, son. Dad, I'm tired. Get up. It's time to get up. Okay. You told me yesterday that you felt sorry. You told me that you sinned against God and you felt sorry for hurting me. Did you mean it? Yes. Okay, well, get up then. <laughs> so the kid comes. The son, we don't know the age. Sit at the table. It's time to have coffee and breakfast. <laughs> And now the conversation begins. Okay. So here are the rules. <laughs> and the son, I can imagine what he was thinking. Oh my gosh. Dad, are you serious? This is my first day here. Give me a break. And the father says, no breaks to you. I want to tell you one more time that you lost the inheritance. You took half of my money. I lost half of my money. All this time that you were gone, I had horrible nights. I had nightmares. I suffered. I cried. When everybody came to see me, asked me about you, and I was just dying, thinking what could happen to you. But I prayed for you to come back safe and sound. You are back. I'm glad. And now you think that I'm going to get you, just 
come back and do your thing again? I'm not going to do that, son. So you better listen to me. You are back in the house. These are the rules. Are you listening to me? Because if you don't want to listen, get your stuff. By the way, bring me the ring. Give me the ring back. Give me the shoes. Bring all these dirty clothes he brought out. Do you hear me? The child, the son. You know that? I'm cool. I'm cool. Okay. So, these are the rules. Get a notebook and write. What? What? I just told you. Do I have to repeat that simple instruction? Are you serious about that? I am serious. Get a notebook and write it down. These are the rules. <laughs> You're going to get up at this time of the day. These are your chores. Time to have lunch is this. Time to have dinner is this. Saturdays we do this. And Sundays we are going to church. <laughs> church? Really, Dad? Really? I'm okay with the work, you know. <laughs> But Sunday is, you know, it's my day off. Do you want to leave? Or are you going to stay? Oh, I'm staying. So are you coming to church on Sunday? Yes, Dad, I'm coming to church on Sunday. Is it still Reverend Lipton, the pastor in the church? Yes, he is still there. Is he going to ask me to sing in the choir again? Probably he will. Now we have better songs, but... The art of listening. Repenting is one thing. Being accepted by God is another thing. But that doesn't end there, my friends. It's just the beginning of a new life. So I'm going to share with you scriptures that will reassure you what I just told you. Okay? Joshua 5.5. 5. While in the desert, many of the fighting men did not listen to the Lord. So the Lord promised that they will not see the land where much food grows. You don't listen, you won't be blessed. Proverbs 8, 1, 8. My son, listen to your father when he corrects you and don't ignore what your mother teaches you. You need to listen and obey your parents and authorities. Proverbs 133, those who listen to God will live in safety and comfort. They will have nothing to fear because God will protect you when you listen to him. Proverbs 834, whoever waits at my door and listens for me will be blessed. Listening equal paying attention bring blessings to you. Proverbs 13, 18. If you refuse to learn from your mistakes, you will be poor. And no one will respect you. If you listen when you are criticized, you will be honored. Because you need to do an evaluation of your mistake. And that should lead you to learn lessons. And sometimes you don't get the lesson by yourself, you need somebody to tell you. So you as a father, you as a mother, you need to tell the son, the daughter, and whomever, this is what you did wrong. But if you refuse, the person refuses to learn from the mistakes, will be poor. Nobody will respect them. But if the person listens when he's criticized, that person will be honored. Because anyone who is being corrected and pays attention is going to be a smart person in the future. Listen to this, Proverbs 16, 23. Wise people always think before they speak. So what they say is worth listening to. Listening is powerful. When you learn to listen, you will learn to process things. You process things and then you will become smart. When you are smart, you are not going to be talking stupid things. 
you are not going to be a fool. Nobody's going to be laughing at what you say. People are going to appreciate your words, your comment, your remarks. Wise people think before they speak. Because they are learning to listen and process everything. Proverbs 28, 9. When people do not listen to God's teachings, he does not listen to their prayers. Now that goes back to you parents. You need to do what is right. I'm glad you are in the church today. I am glad for you guys watching, for you, my friend, I'm glad you are listening to the teaching. But I want you to understand something. Just listen. Just listening is not going to to fix the issue. You need to obey those teachings. But imagine those who do not listen even God's teachings. They are even worse. But at least when you are listening, you are giving God the honor. You actually are giving to yourself the opportunity to learn something. And then through your obedience... To those teachings. You put yourself in a great position to intercede for your children. Obedient to God's teachings makes you earn the right to be heard by God. Isn't it wonderful? You do what is right. You please the Lord. You talk to him and you ask him. And he will say, sure. You please me. You are listening to me. Sure. What do you need? And I'm telling you this, the Lord already knows what you need. But you must say your prayers. Now, there is something that the Lord Jesus said here in Matthew 18 that is absolutely valuable. Listen to this. If your brother or sister in God's family does something wrong, go and tell them what they did wrong. Do this when you are alone with them. If they listen to you, then you have helped them. To be your brother or sister again. Persuasion is the result of someone with experience listening. Persuasion is essential. Somebody is doing something wrong. You need to be persuasive. But especially if it is the case of somebody that is close to you that is doing something wrong. You need to talk to this person with intelligence. And if you listen... The art of listening is not just for the son that is coming back to the house and listen and learn the new rules. It's not just for the employee coming to the company, learning and listening. It's also for everybody. The art of listening is for us. The opportunity to change the way of learning, of seeing things and understanding things. When you are listening and you are learning, you are going to become very persuasive. You have power, but you need to be persuasive by saying things in such a way that will, will make people become reasonable so they can reason with you. It's not backing up the statement With a stick or a weapon. No. You give them the argument so they can understand. Now, if they don't want to do it, that's different. But your job is to be persuasive in a good way. And I want to finish with this part of Luke 15 again. Because it's important that you see this. The father ran to hold his son in his arms. Eventually, this son came back. The father prayed. The son did the right thing. Now it was the time for this father to to run to him and make them feel accepted. If you are that son, if you are that daughter that have been running away from God and doing stupid things all over the place, and you are planning to come back to God, I want you to know God is willing to receive you right away with open arms. But also that applies to your family. You need to go to your family and expect that your father, your mother is going to receive you with open arms. 
And also this applies to you as a parent being willing to run into the search for your son and your daughter that is coming back to you and receive them with open arms. Yes, I get it. You will have the party and tomorrow you're going to wake him up for breakfast and coffee and the, the responsibilities. But, it's, but even then, you must receive this person with love. Because that is what the Lord God, God does with everybody. You know, when you repent and you come to the presence of God, he will say, absolutely, I forgive you. You know, the, the moment that you bend a little and you acknowledge that you have sinned, that very moment the Lord is pleased and he says, I'm here with you. He runs to you and holds you because he loves you. And we need to understand that that applies also to us when it's about other people failing. Because it's not just about we receiving the forgiveness from God. It's also about we imparting forgiveness to those that fail to us. It's the Lord's Prayer. Forgive me, Lord. And help me to forgive those have, that have sinned against me. That's the perfection in love, my friend. I know I need his love. I know they need my love. I know I need his forgiveness. I know they need my forgiveness. That's fair. Because what is not fair... It's for anybody here saying, love me, God, and forgive me, God, but I cannot forgive this person. Love me, God, and bless me, but I'm not willing to share with anybody what he has given to me. It's mine. What kind of person thinks that way? Is the person that never heard what I just said. But if you are listening, if you are paying attention to this, you must change. Because you need from God his love, forgiveness, protection, and provision. He is expecting that when we receive all that from God, we are willing to give and share the same things to everybody else. And that, my friends, is the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is right now touching everybody here in person and over the broadcast. The Holy Spirit is moving you to surrender. So now I want you to do this. If you need to surrender before the Lord, honestly, wherever you are, on your knees, do it. If you need to surrender, you have never surrendered to God on your knees, not before me, before God. Go ahead. Don't be a rebel. You have failed to God on your knees for the first time in your life on your knees and ask God for forgiveness that my friend is the right thing to do humble yourself before the Lord there you go and when you are there you lift up your hands and you say with me please Lord God forgive me please Lord God forgive me I believe Jesus is your son and I need your forgiveness. In the name of Jesus, Lord, forgive me today. Thank you for loving me and your mercy. Amen. Simple as that, my friend. I want to give you this scripture, John 3, 16. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not be lost but have eternal life. So there you go. Receive your eternal life here in person, here in the broadcast, through the audio. Receive the forgiveness of God. It's through faith in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are ill, listen to this. Promise, Isaiah 53, we are healed because of his pain. I am healed because of his pain. We are healed because of his pain. Glory to God. I invite you for next Sunday service, April 30th, 
Worship Service 340, I will teach to you about soul and body. People sometimes don't understand what's inside, what is going to go to heaven. I'm going to explain that to you next Sunday. Soul and body. For today, this is what I have. I invite you to go to the website, thechurch.us, and share this message, Returning Home. Thank you for being here with us. And I remind you, Victory Radio 24-7, victoryradio.us. We'll keep you company. And remember, Victory Radio is the new thing. Until then, I wish you a beautiful rest of your day. One of the most wonderful things in the Bible is the promise from God to a believer to be abundantly blessed when the believer gives to the Lord the first fruits of his work and labors. Learn this promise in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Test me in this way, says the Lord of armies. Bring me the 10% of your income and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not ruin the produce of your land and your vine in your field would not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of armies. Victory Radio is now available 24-7. Visit our website, www.victoryradio.us. Great music, positive messages, optimism to keep you company while you work, or when you drive, or when you are at home cooking. Faith is what you need. Faith comes when you hear the right thing. Victory Radio is the new thing. Find us on the website, www.victoryradio.us. Have a great rest of your day. If you own a Roku TV, a Roku TV device, an Apple TV device, or own a Fire Stick, we invite you to install the Geon TV app. With the Geon TV app installed on your TV, you will be able to watch all the videos from the comfort of your home and be inspired with our programs. Enjoy music, inspirational videos, Bible teachings, and beautiful videos that will keep your tank of faith full all the time at the touch of a button. Remember G on TV. Receive the inspiration to achieve your calling in life. By Giancarlo Vicitoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwork. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy, until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. Welcome to this website, MyNewMentor.com. Here you will find the tools to establish a direct communication with your new mentor, Gian. Get the available spot on Gian's schedule and set your appointment to have an audio or video call via Skype with Gian. You are my up thinking of you wanting to find you you removed all my fears also you took all of my tears you make me feel loved you make me feel good i love your words you changed my world you make me feel loved you make me feel good i love your words you changed my world you are my moonlight I can 
can fool I can be considering my situation I cry out where are you God you promised me to be with me here all the time you said that I will not be alone you promised me that you will be with me no matter what no matter what in
disappointed you quite many times. I failed, I messed up big time. Acting right was not my style. Sad days, now all is bright. The sun is shining with its light. I feel the wind blowing off my skin. I feel your love coming, you're my spring. The winter is over, no more snow. My heart, you filled with your love. Now in my home I hear the birds I see the kids playing, boys and girls Hear the explosion, because my life is in commotion I feel that I am falling down Whoever saves me must have a crown flower needs the sun, like the ocean wants the moon, like the grass needs the rain, come and take my pain away, how can somebody fix my heart, my life is falling apart, if only there was somebody who sees that I'm not, nobody, how can somebody fix my heart, my life is falling apart, if only there was somebody who sees that I'm not, nobody, sing to me, a love song again, fly me on, your airplane, be my shining star tonight. I need you badly in my life. It is absolutely amazing what I am feeling. Never before I experienced what you have done to me. I know that in the past, I didn't see things as I do now. But honestly, you have changed everything for me. And uh, I don't want to let it go. I don't want you to go anywhere. Stay here with me, by me, because you make me feel alive. And I know that you love me, and I love you. I love you with all of my heart. I belong to you. You brought me a new life, a life that is absolutely profound, real, and true.
the blessings of God are going to come to you when you are listening to the right thing, God's Word. You can find us in all of these platforms. Search for Gian TV on Apple TV, Roku TV, and Fire TV. Do you prefer a podcast? Find us too. And remember Victory Radio 24-7. The kingdom of God is near. Thank you for investing time with Victory Church Odessa. Feel free to subscribe to our channel here on this platform. Also, you can go to our website, vchurch.us, to connect with the rest of the platforms where you can follow us. Our address is 2400 West 81st Street, Odessa, Texas, 79764. Our Sunday worship service begins at 10 a.m. Our phone number is 432-614-9798. Our email address is info at vchurch.us. Feel free to share this program with your family and friends. Until next time, we wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Many blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus.